We want to update you on the polygamist cult leader trial and a very interesting moment that just happened a couple minutes ago. This case is happening in Georgia. Uh, there's a defendant sitting with his attorney. His name is Elio Nature Boy Bishop. Yeah, he calls himself the Nature Boy. He's accused of raping one of his followers and then distributing revenge porn after she tried to leave the cult. Now, court resumed on Tuesday after being dark on Wednesday due to the judge having COVID. Moments ago, Bishop's defense team was pushing for a longer COVID break, and the judge responded by revealing that the defendant did an Instagram live video from the jail on Wednesday. Take a look. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. That Mr. Bishop was on a live through a jail call yesterday during which he indicated his desire that the case so that the case would be assigned to another judge. Oh, so I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, Mr. Bishop, I know you're, you're doing everything you possibly can to try to get this case to go away, or at least get away from me. Um, but that's not how it works. So, okay. We, um, we've got the feed going. So Mr. We Bishop has indicated he did not make that statement on the jail. So I'm okay. All right, there wasn't, it's interesting how he was able to post an Instagram live post from the jail, but somebody emailed my office that there was some post. I, I wouldn't, go. yeah, don't talk about it, Mr. Bishop, it's not gonna help you. All right. Um, in, yeah, all right, we're gonna take a quick break so we can get the Zoom link, um, and then we'll Zoom. Oh my gosh, his poor attorney, do you see his attorney shaking his head? Uh, that tells me he had no idea and he's disgusted by the behavior as the judge was. I want to bring in my guests. Let's talk about this a little bit. I have with me Corey Pegues and Dr. Janie Lacey. Uh, Corey, defendants just never cease to amaze us, don't they? This guy's in jail on trial being accused of rape and he goes live on Instagram from the jail. Well, listen, truth be told, that's quite common now. If you look on YouTube, you see all these prisoners in prison with cell phones. I don't know if the protocols are lax in prisons around the country, but it's not, a, I'm not surprised, Julie. Mm -hmm. Janie, I'm not surprised. And I'm wondering, how does it happen? They're not supposed to have phones there, right? Like, right. Who's exactly. slipping the phones into the jails and the prisons? Uh, this guy Direction is something else. Uh, Dr. Janie, I just want to bounce a couple of facts off of you, please, and get your reaction. So apparently this guy calls himself Nature Boy. I thought that Ric Flair was the only Nature Boy, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Elio Bishop, Corey caught that reference, uh, you know, Wrestling reference for any wrestling fans out there. Uh, so, Ric Flair, he's the real nature boy. This guy, this defendant, thinks he's the nature boy. He's 40 years old. He he created this cult. The tenets of the cult, Dr. Janie, are veganism, nudism, and polygamy. He also, before becoming uh, the leader of this cult, worked as a model, as a stripper, and as a barber. Uh, Mr. Bishop seems to be an interesting guy. And now we're just getting word, Dr. Janie, that he doesn't want to be in the courtroom anymore. So he's just deciding that he's just not going to be there. The judge warned him about this the other day, said the trial will go on without you, sir. Uh, so we're getting word that after that little exchange about the IG Live, he just said, I'm going to go back to my jail cell. Maybe he's going to do another one. Uh, Dr. Janie, what kind of a guy do you think we could be dealing with here? Well, when I'm hearing all these facts, Julie, there's definitely, with no doubt, a detachment from the seriousness of reality and the seriousness of the consequences of his action. When we look at people that join communities that are cult-like, there are a lot of people that are vulnerable, that are looking to be accepted, that are looking to be part of something. And I would probably go out to say that he took advantage of a lot of people that were probably looking for certain types of community and acceptance of people that were more of a vulnerable nature in many different ways and uplifting himself in a very um, 
godlike figure to almost be in the place where he's in this fantasy world that there's a seriousness nature going on. And yes, there's commonality, people have cameras, they can do all these other types of things on social media, but there's also this reality where there's empathy and there's compassion. And when we lack those types of dynamics in our personality, it says a lot about that people are objects and that they believe potentially that they are better than everyone else or uplifted higher. Yes, Dr. Jeannie, this is so helpful. And as you're saying this, I'm thinking back to when this Elio Bishop did an interview with police. And honest to goodness, he told police that he is God. We have the clip. Let's watch it together now. What about the, the guys there that, that, and the girls that claim that you are God? I am not. I believe I'm not. Okay. I do. I believe that I'm God. I believe we're God. I believe everything is connected. I believe that you're God. I believe that the way I treat you is how, how I treat God. I believe you don't treat God. We don't praise an invisible God. We praise each other. The way I treat you is how I treat God. I don't put God in my mind. I put God in you. And I love you as I love God. And my relationship with you is my relationship with God. We're God. We're all one. We're one earth, one source. We all breathe the same here on this one rock in the middle of nowhere. And if you're flying into the, into the dimensions of the, the abyss of darkness, we're all on this one rock together. And we gotta get along. This is what I'm teaching. We can't keep fighting them, right? People don't wanna hear this. They don't, but I've been breaking through. I've been breaking See that all that they have right now, that's going to be on the news. That's going to be my name on the news. And what's going to be on the news? So I'm, I'm looking at this like, okay, oh, cool, this is good. This is what I need. I need press to get people to listen to me. Because they keep treating me as a joke. I'm telling them that the matters of the universe. I'm saying, listen, we need to eat this food. We need to get this much sunlight. We need to get out the hood, put the guns away. This is what we need to do. Because we keep ending up behind ours. So we have to let them tune the lane. And this is my message to people. I said the tenets of the cult, veganism, nudism, and polygamy, and he says he is God. Uh, Dr. Janie, you told us all about this. It's like without even seeing that, you knew this is the kind of guy we're dealing with here, huh? When you think about that, there are certain religious sects that believe that God is not outside of us, it's inside of us. But that does not necessarily mean that in this case, when we kind of potentially take someone that has some type of psychosis or some deep mental health challenges or deep rooted trauma and being able to kind of create this almost narcissism of themselves to be able to get acceptance and validation from their community is very distorted and um, is, is not necessarily something that people who truly believe in this religious nature that um, that they are God or God is in all of us necessarily take advantage of people. So there's definitely some different other things going on in this case. Oh, for sure. Uh, Dr. Janie, this is so helpful. Thank you. Uh, I want to let you both know we just got another update here. So apparently after he decided to not be present, he reconsidered and returned to the courtroom. We want to show you a live look where now he's objecting to the judge being there. He's had a lot of back and forth with this judge who is very smart. She's been great with him on the law, uh, trying to protect his rights, essentially, when he was saying the other day he may not feel like coming to court. He may fire his attorney, and she was very patient. Uh, let's see uh, how her patience may be tested here. All right, um, have you discussed his ability to testify or not testify I have, in Judge, that context? And we, for, that's another objection that we would have, Judge, because obviously his ability to testify uh, and to defend his case from the jail, uh, he doesn't feel like the choice or the option that he has. He's happy to be in the court uh, if the CDC guidelines are followed in his opinion, but if the CDC guidelines are not followed, he feels compelled uh, to follow his own health and his own um, best interests. And so he is going to go to the jail uh, and observe his trial there. He understands that uh, his ability to testify, and I believe his, his ability to testify will certainly be encumbered um, if he chooses to testify. But at this point, I think he's going to take his own health uh, over anything else. So I would advise him of his right to testify or not testify. Uh, I do think that he will not choose to testify under these circumstances. Uh, but you can certainly inquire of him and explain to him his right, because obviously that's what the court will do. All right. Well, the trial is going forward. We've already, we've been through that um, significantly. Okay. We, um, just for the record, we did recess Tuesday afternoon for the rest of the day Tuesday and all day yesterday. 
Um, we are back here. It is Thursday, and um, we are ready to go forward. We had a company come in and sanitize the courtroom. We have a machine, an air circulation filtration system going in the courtroom. I've provided masks for all of the, anybody who wants them, spectators, anybody, jurors, lawyers. And you can have two masks. You want a double mask? You can double mask. Um, I am going to continue to wear a mask during the trial. And I think, frankly, folks are safer now than they were on Monday because now I'm wearing a mask. Um, oh, we have shields? Where's the sh get him a shield? What's the... Okay. What did we do? All right, put it over the mask. All right, we can... Where is it? Will you get one? Sure. Okay, we have a face shield, too. We can put a face shield on them. Deputies, are they okay he, with that? He's not going to want a face shield, Judge. He's, he's not, not going to want a... He doesn't want a face shield. He's not asking for a face shield. What his, I, his, I understand. He's indicating that the court is still positive for COVID, and because of that, he does not want to be in the courtroom. He's, okay. he's elected to take advantage of his own health. He's entitled to do that. Sure. Uh, you know, that, that's... All yeah. right, just make sure the record is clear that I am not instructing that he leave the courtroom. My preference is for him to stay and participate in his defense with his attorney. However, if he does not want to be here, um, we will make arrangements for him to observe the proceedings from the jail courtroom. But he, but he does want to be here, Judge. He just well, he's, be here. it's his choice. So I, I want him here. Everybody else is here. Everybody else is fine. Um, jurors are here, ready to go. Attorneys are here, ready to go. The only person that has a problem is Mr. Bishop. So that is his right, and I'm not infringing upon that. If he is uncomfortable being in this courtroom, I will consider it a voluntary absence, and we will bring him back to the jail, where he will put on his orange jumpsuit, and he will observe the trial from the jail courtroom. He is, he is aware of that, Judge, okay. and he would just go ahead and go through his right to test for or not. Yep. All right. Mr. Bishop, do you under, Mr. Bishop, do you understand? I need to know you understand these things. Mr. Bishop. Judge. Yeah. Mr. Bishop would like to inquire if the court would state on the record whether you're still positive for COVID or not. I have no idea. Okay. I, I was positive on Monday night. I feel a million times better today than I did on um, Monday night. He, but just, he just wants the record to reflect that you're, you're here in court. Uh, you could be potentially still positive for COVID. Um, and his options okay. are to be positive, be in the courtroom with someone who's positive <laughs> for COVID or not. All right, that's, we've that's gone through, it. yeah, I understand. You've made your record, Mr. Bishop, you've made your point. Um, it's interesting to me for all sorts of reasons that that's your concern, but at any rate. So Mr. Bishop clearly instructing his counsel there to let her honor know that he objects to her being in the courtroom. He's saying he has COVID-19 concerns. Apparently the judge had had it, has returned, is wearing a mask. He's wearing a mask and uh, he is trying to use COVID as a reason to delay the trial. The judge has indicated over and over again that uh, it's not being delayed. It's going to keep on moving forward. So uh, while uh, they're on the little break there, we're going to hit our little break here. We're going to be right back with more Court TV Live for you right after this. I'm the armor. Or at least I was. A famous actor in a movie set accident that ended in tragedy. I turn and come because the gun goes off. Now, Alec Baldwin and the film's armorer have both been charged with involuntary manslaughter. Just because it's an accident doesn't mean that it's not criminal. Court TV takes you inside the courtroom as Hannah Gutierrez faces a jury. The Baldwin movie shooting trial. Live coverage today, only on Court TV. Well, we're seeing the fireworks in the courtroom in Georgia where accused polygamist cult leader Elio Nature Boy Bishop is being tried. He's accused of raping a woman who tried to leave the cult and then disseminating revenge porn of her when she did. Now, these are very serious allegations. And Bishop is asking his attorney to make arguments to the court to stop the trial because of COVID-19 concerns. And the judge is explaining to Booker through his counsel and to everyone in the courtroom that she has complied with the CDC guidelines and the trial is moving forward. Let's go back in where we left off. 
We have made arrangements for you to go back to the jail and observe the proceedings in the jail courtroom. Do you understand? Do you understand that if you do that, you're not going to be able to talk to your attorney necessarily throughout the trial? You're not going to be able to whisper in his ear. You're not going to be able to consult with him periodically. It's going to be a lot more difficult for you to communicate with your attorney. Do you understand that? I do not understand. Okay. Well, your attorney can explain it to you. Um, also, you will have the right in, to testify in this case in your own defense if you would like. Uh, you do not have to. It is entirely up to you. If you choose to testify, you will be subject to cross-examination like any other witness would be. If you do not testify, I will instruct the jury that they are not allowed to hold that against you in any manner. Um, and you can consult with your attorney about whether or not you want to testify, or whether or not it's in your best interest, but ultimately the decision has to be made by you. So. Um, we, we have, Judge, we, we discussed whether or not he wants to testify or not. He will tell you exactly what he chooses to do so. But he wants to make sure the record is clear that his uh, ability to be here in court, he doesn't feel like he's had any other option but to take his own health at issue is not something he's just elected to do. He's indicated that he's not going to be here in a courtroom where someone tests positive or COVID. Uh, he's not going to do it. And so he understands that uh, going to the jail is his option. That's what he's going to elect. He has indicated that he does not want the trial to start. And so he's at the jail and on the camera and able to see what's going on uh, in his own trial. Okay. Well, again, as I mentioned, he's the only person who has an issue with this. Um, so the trial is going forward with him here or with him in the courtroom jail. That is his decision. Um, also, Mr. Bishop, if you choose to go back to the jail to observe the trial, you're not going to be able to change your mind and come back. Um, it's, it, there's too much involved. Time, it, it's going to take about 30 minutes to get you there, dressed out and back into the courtroom. And we don't have time for the back and forth business. So once you exercise this option that I'm giving you, um, and this is, make no mistake, this is your choice. This is your choice, okay? If you exercise your option to do this, that's on you, and you're not gonna be able to undo it. You're not gonna be able to come back for parts of it. So it's, it, you either stick around and we finish this trial, or you go to the jail courtroom and you observe. And, and Judge, again, he, he's indicating it's not a matter of his choice. He doesn't feel like he has an option, so it's not a choose A or B. Uh, it's a well, not going to in the courtroom because there's someone here that's positive with COVID. So okay. he, he, he's asking, uh, he understands that he's asking if we will just give him time to get back to the jail to get this out. Uh, and he would just ask him whether or not he intends to testify. Mr. Bishop, do you intend to testify in this case? Do you feel like you have an option uh, to testify? I have an option, but I don't know if I want to. Okay. Uh, if you are, so you're going to have to give the court a yes or a no that you intend to testify or not at this point. I don't know. Okay. Well, then we'll ask him again. I notified of him. I notified him of his rights on the record. I will ask you again outside the presence of the jury at the conclusion of the defendant's evidence um, if you want to testify or not. And if you do, you'll have to testify from the jail courtroom uh, without having your attorney there. Your attorney will be here. Do you understand that? No. Okay, well, I can't make it any clearer. Yes, Mr. Coveney? I can just put two things on the record. Yes, please. One, I just want to establish that we do have technology that would allow Mr. Bishop to testify from the jail courtroom yes. and stream that live into the courtroom. Yes, so we do. Possible. Yeah, I, I said you could testify from the jail courtroom. Secondly, um, I think there was some confusion earlier about the current CDC guidelines. We all know they're in the process of changing, but they, I have it pulled up CDC.gov isolation protocols. If you test positive for COVID-19, stay home for at least five days. But then it counts day zero is the onset of symptom or is the day of symptom onset regardless of when you test positive. So it also says you are most likely to be infectious during these first five days, wear a high quality mask if you must be around others at home and in public and don't go to places where you're unable to wear a mask. So it contemplates being around other people. Of course it people. does. It says wear a mask. We are in 2024, the end of February, beginning of March tomorrow. It's been we four are years. Four years removed from the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a legal system, we need to learn to live with this. The state is asking the court to go forward and that's what we have to do. And Judge, if I have a chance to respond to that, 
I only I, I get that we're four years ahead, but right over here in this box where the jurors are sitting, we still have plates of glass up that the jurors can't be beside each other. We had only four years ago a few million people across this, this world and country to die as a result of COVID-19. There are people, the hospital systems were overwhelmed. My client, he, he gets one life and he's elected not to be in the courtroom with someone. His position is that we don't even know if you're positive or negative at this point. You haven't taken another test. Uh, and so ultimately, Judge, his position is that he understands the prejudice that uh, will exist, but it's not a prejudice that he feels uh, that he has created uh, by being placed in the jail court. Uh, he's going to go back to the jail court. Whether he chooses to testify at that point or not will be a decision that he will make. Uh, because at this point, I don't know that he's made a ultimate decision, uh, but he's elected to go to the jail court and he will dress out in his orange garb and he will pop up on the screen and watch it just like everybody else. So we're ready to get going. All right, let's do it. Um, we'll be in recess until we get uh, Mr. Bishop. Okay, um, so back to the jail, he will go. His decision. The judge explained how he can still view the proceedings, participate in the proceedings, even testify from the jail because he is adamant that his health is at risk. Uh, despite everyone being in compliance with the CDC guidelines, he thinks he's safer from COVID in the jail. Okay, uh, well, if he does an Instagram Live again, the judge is going to be watching for it. All right, so here's what's happening. They're going to take a recess until Mr. Bishop is transported back to the jail. Once he's in the jail, he can get set up, he can watch, communicate there, and the trial is gonna roll on. So we're gonna let you know what's going on here. And if you're just kind of joining the trial, we're in the defense case. So they're presenting witnesses, they're choosing to present a defense. He may testify. Wouldn't that be something if this polygamous cult leader gets up there and wants to take the stand? If he does, we're gonna show it to you live right here on Court TV.